across the UK, there's an enormous increasing number of people sleeping rough. You know, the, the life expectancy of a rough sleeper is 43. 43. When it's like this, it's really cold. And it's a nightmare. I used to just walk around the streets to keep warm. If you've been out all day and you've got wet, then suddenly you've got wind chill. It can be like five or six degrees, but wind chill can take it down to sub-zero. It becomes really dangerous, you know, you die. There's no reason that anyone should die from hypothermia on the streets. When I designed Sleep Pod, I had a list of ideas that I needed to tick boxes on. It had to be light, easy to put up, easy to put away, easy to carry. The main principle is your own body heat, once you get inside the Sleep Pod, self warms the Sleep Pod. This is the front door, you climb inside the Sleep Pod's feet first, and then once you're in, pull the front door up, and there's Velcro on both sides, which then keeps you nice and warm. One of the key points to keeping Sleep Pod cheap is by using teams of volunteers to actually build the Sleep Pods and put them together. Last year at the Roche Diabetes Care Company Convention, we took part in supporting Sleep Pod. Nobody even hesitated, everybody was mad just to get going and back out everybody was hands on deck and down on their knees. We're used to doing some kind of team building on these work conventions, but this was really different. It was just a reminder of how we can get bogged down with pretty meaningless problems in life. And, you know, there's thousands of people out there that would just love to be able to have a comfortable night's sleep. I think it was quite emotional for, for us and, and for most people that were there as well. There wasn't a dry eye in the house, really. It was a great way to give back to the community. Ross was really special because we also had Jim from Brighton who was receiving the pods that we built from Ross. He was able to engage and talk a little bit about the necessity and the need for what we were doing. Watching them get built was pretty, pretty amazing because it wasn't just a team gathering event. It was building something that would leave that building with us and go straight out to the street, you know, which it did. On the first weekend, we had a storm. It was so cold, we managed to go out and, with hot drinks and sleep pods. And if you went round Brighton the following morning, all you see was sleep pods in doorways and sleep pods in alleyways. And for that one night, it saved lives. What it did for the rest of the winter is incredible. But if they hadn't had those on that night, we would have had deaths that night. There's no question about it whatsoever. Jim's laid out sleep pods. They're really thick, they were like, basically you can eat like a really thick coat. The guys have been using them non-stop and we, we get them back and we fix them up and we hand them out. What's been really fantastic is seeing everything go full circle. So from our initial conversations with Jim and the Sleep Pod Boys last year, to watching the Roche team do the build and then now seeing the Sleep Pods still in use a year later on the streets of Brighton. Seeing the changing world that we're living in and the increased problems that are coming about. We really need help, first of all, with, with building the pods and we also need the financial support as well through our fundraising. Please support this great cause by sharing the fundraising information from the Sleep Pod website or get into contact with them directly to get involved in another Sleep Pod build session. I'd like to thank you for everything done for us last year and hopefully you can do whatever you can to support us this year because the difference you're making to the guys in the street is a life-saving support. Thank you.